last of the philosophical elements for us to consider here are to do with ethics. Now, um, for, for any of you doing projects other than the extended literature review, you must get ethical approval for your study. Um, no matter what you're doing, this is the standard within the school. You must apply for this. So you need to get the University Research Ethics Board form, which is on the, uh, the, the, the portal. You just type in UREB form and you will find that particular form. Uh, and you send that within our own school to the School Research Ethics Group. But you work on the form with your supervisor and um, uh, the supervisor needs to sign this off for you. So that's the one element. But because you're in a place of employment and doing your study within your uh, um, employment area, you must get your own employers to sign off on this as well. So normally that's the research and development team, maybe within human resources, that you need to contact those. And it could be that you're going to fill in one form, maybe for R&D or for the school first, and send that off. Um, or you may be doing the two simultaneously. But if you do one before the other, at least then you can tell the other authority, I've already got ethical approval for this from the other one. And that can make the process a bit easier for you. Okay, so really important uh, that you, 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 you do that. So when you're considering ethics, there are various uh, aspects of this that you must take into consideration. One of them obviously is just going to be to do with um, confidentiality. So supposing you're doing a look back exercise with patient notes, then um, you need to make sure that you're not getting patients' names on these. So what data do you actually need? Do you need um, genders? Do you need uh, age groups? Do you need particular clinical uh, diagnoses? What are the things you need? But you don't need anything more than that. So you wouldn't need patients' names or their addresses, any form of contact detail. But the ethics forms will also want to know how you're going to protect those data. So if you're getting them sent to you by a particular department within your work, how are you storing them? Where are they being stored? Does anybody else have access to this? So you must consider it from the point of view of confidentiality. Also, when you consider the four pillars of health and social care ethics, you've got to make sure that those are all embedded as well. Now, that's on, on, on one level, uh, if you were seeing documentation, for example. Another one could be that maybe you're working with people and talking about sensitive issues. So the ethics there will include how are you going to protect individuals, uh, what sort of backup or resources might you be offering them should they need to discuss this with somebody else? So supposing you're dealing with people who are talking about personal issues and they might get quite raw in talking about these. Now, if you're there in a capacity to, um, to gather data for a research study, but not there to offer counselling or pastoral support afterwards, and yet the topics you're discussing may bring these issues up, then how are you going to be able to support these people to give them a referral so that they can get help elsewhere or support elsewhere should they actually need that? So that's how the ethics is running through this. But also ethics means um, who you're including in your study. And by the very fact of including some people, you may be excluding others. Now, what's going to be the impact of you excluding? How are you deciding to, who to include and who to exclude? And are you therefore being discriminatory? Is that discrimination based on negative bias? All of these issues are some of the ethical topics that, that you'll need to consider. Um, and you also need to consider them in relation to your own professional body, because sometimes the different professional organisations have their own ethical rules and guidelines for carrying out research, as well as um, BERA, B-E-R-A, the British Educational Research um, Association. So lots of different organisations have research rules and regulations. It's worth getting hold of those, reading those documents and then citing them within your work as well to make sure that you're as sound as possible on the ethical dimensions of your study.